Hey guys, Woodruff here. Let's jump into acute back pain. Um, so we are in our long musculoskeletal lecture <clears throat> and we are starting to get into some of the disease processes. So um, this section, we talk about acute back pain, we talk about chronic back pain. We also talk about um, degenerative disc disease, but right now we're in acute disorder. So we're gonna talk about acute back pain. So this is something that most nurses will go through at some point in their lifetime if you have not already gone through it in some other aspect of your life. Um, acute back pain is as it suggests, it is a short term, um, something that usually happens quickly, you know, or happens, um, you know, uh, over a short period of time. Um, usually related to a strain or an injury. So uh, risk factors for this are going to uh, be things like having extra weight on you. You know, um, most of the time acute low back pain um, is in the low back because that's where we carry most of our weight. So if we're already carrying extra weight, we're going to be more li likely to have acute back pain issues. Having stress um, can cause a low back, uh, acute back pain. A poor posture is a big thing. I always hated there was this one um, hospital orientation where uh, we were all sitting in a room and we didn't really know what was coming next. And this guy comes in and he just goes around and starts like judging all of our postures and like, telling us how bad we are. He was a physical therapist and um, he was there to kind of teach us about things and to help us too. And he was teaching us like how to turn patients and blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was very humbling to see like how hard it is to keep a good posture. Um, smoking and smoking has to do with that smoking messes with blood vessels and poor blood flow can lead to, um, backflow issues, which can lead to pain and other problems. Pregnancy, it goes along with obesity, carrying more weight in your stomach, especially, um, can create tension in your back, um, then occupational hazards. So like this picture actually breaks down, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, all the ways, um, that you can, uh, you know, all the like hazards of being a nurse, you know, accidental sticks, uh, heart hazardous substances. Um, you know, we have sore, sore, eh, sore shoulders. Maybe that's one of those, like, kind of like those, um, was it called, uh, Dr. Seuss things, the shore shoulders. See, I can't even say it. Like, you know, it's like, um, who sells seashells by the sea. Okay. I'm going to stop. Um, yeah. Sore shoulders, um, from pushing wheelchairs and gurneys. Um, then also, um, you know, they talk about the strained back. It's it's the most common injury. And I see this happen with nurses. I actually know a couple of nurses right now or in the last year that have been out um, for an extended period of time because of um, back injuries. Um, it's from transfers. It's from catching patients who are almost falling. It's most often from turning a patient. Um, but uh, a lot of other issues can happen. And like they're saying, this says here, and I'm sure the statistic is older, but we're seven times more likely to have a musculoskeletal disorder. Cause a lot of just the general stuff that we do, the bending, kneeling, stooping, um, that kind of stuff that we do in our job puts us at risk for arthritis and other stuff, which we'll talk about later. But in any way, um, hopefully you're not watching this and now turning it off. Cause you're like, maybe I'm going to quit nursing school. There is a lot of health hazards, um, and occupational hazards, but there's some good stuff too. So hang in there. So um, what are our priority assessments, questions, and diagnostics? So um, assessment-wise, um, I want to ask them about their pain. How long has it lasted? Because um, like I mentioned, usually acute back pain is going to last four weeks or less. And I think your new textbook says that usually on average, it doesn't last more than two weeks. Um, we want to see, did something happen right before their pain started? So like with other back pain and problems, like there's not always a precipitating cause, but with acute back pain, there's usually an injury. So I want to assess if there's some sort of injury. I want to know where on their back it hurts because like I mentioned, usually acute back pain is in the low part of the back where we carry most of our weight. Um, we want to know what makes it better or what makes it worse. Um, is there certain positions or things that help? Um, and then assess their flexibility and range of motion. Like, is there any particular position or way um, uh, that makes it worse, um, you know, or how limited, like, so they have this injury, but how much is it limiting their day-to-day -day or their ability to do activities? Um, diagnostics, they're really hard for acute back pain because most of the changes are pretty subtle. So it's not like you strain your back at work and then you go get a CT and they're like, oh, I can see right here where you strained your back. Um, a lot of times it's just in the muscles and stuff. Um, but sometimes they can see deeper stuff. So they may get an MRI or CT, um, usually with spine stuff. Um, MRI is going to be more accurate and uh, give us more information, but not always. 
um, we're going to also do what's called a straight leg raising test, which I think I have. Oh, what do I have? Okay, here it is. Oh, I need to rearrange my slides. So this is a straight leg raising test. And so what we do is um, we um, raise their leg up like this, and then um, we have them lower their leg down. And um, if they start to feel like kind of a uh, like a sharp pain or like a shooting pain in their lower back as they're lowering their foot when it's less than 60 degrees of flexion it's usually a sign of um uh, what do you call it a, it's a sign of uh nerve irritation that root which can be either it can be an acute problem we'll talk about this with chronic two or degenerative disc disease so it can it's just more of a diagnosis not necessarily of acute back pain but a lower back problem so let's get back here so how do we know that they're getting better? I mean, effectively, the main symptom, the main problem here is their pain. They might have limited range of motion or functional abilities. Um, so it's better if they have less pain or if they, you know, have able to move, they're able to do what they um, want to do on a day-to-day -day basis. And obviously it's worse if there's more pain, um, if they have worsening ability, like functional ability or ability to move, um, or if it lasts more than four weeks, because that could be a sign that it, they're going to like a chronic back pain. So what can we do medically wise, um, you know, overall, our goals are to get them back to their regular capabilities, ability to take care of themselves, um, have better quality of life. And, you know, um, the doctors may encourage them to have weight loss if that's their main issue. It may depend on what the root cause is. Um, regular strength and flexibility training, they may need short term physical therapy with acute back pain, usually it resolves on its own, but they may need some therapy or things or some exercises to help. Um, there's a lot around pain management management because pretty much this is self-limiting it will get better um, just needs to manage it in the meantime um, so um, with this we're usually going to start with the least invasive medicine first so we'll start with stuff like NSAIDs um, like ibuprofen and um, then uh, we might also use other what we call adjunctives to pain or other things that can help with pain like uh, muscle relaxers which we'll talk about later um, heat and cold applications, whatever feels better. You know, some people feel better with the cold on their back. Other people feel better with heat on their back. Um, there's what's called a TENS unit. And that is, um, it kind of, um, just like most people don't realize pain medicine doesn't actually take away your pain. It just stops your, wherever the pain's happening from signal, signaling and telling your brain that there's pain there. Um, a TENS unit does similar stuff. It changes the signals to your brain to stop it, stop it from thinking there's pain happening. It changes some electrical conduction stuff. Um, but people have good luck um, using that unit as well. Um, there's also massage can help, um, especially with the acute back pain. So what am I going to do as the nurse for this patient? Um, and you're going to see this as kind of a common theme. Aside from a few patients, um, for most musculoskeletal issues, I want them up and moving um, as much, especially with back problems. It, like these patients are not going to want to move, um, but it's so helpful and so important for them to move. We do not want them to stay in the same position. We do not want them to stay in bed for too long. Um, it can really mess with their ability um, to recover and get better. So um, we do want to encourage movement. They don't need to get crazy or be running any marathons, um, but, um, you know, regular position changes make a big difference. Uh, I'll talk about this more when we get to chronic back pain, but you know, like with my husband, he has, he never, he doesn't follow any of this stuff that he's supposed to do for his back problems. And he always complains, but like sometimes he's sitting there, he's like, oh, my back hurts so bad. And I'm like, were you just laying in bed for 14 hours though? Um, because if you lay in bed for 14 hours, your back is going to hurt. Um, if you're laying in any position, even if he was sitting in a chair for 14 hours, it's going to hurt. So you don't want to stay in the same position. Um, movement is very important for the musculoskeletal system. Um, we also want to teach them about proper body mechanics and how to maintain a good normal curvature and posture. The best positions for these patients, this goes for all back patients, um, but we'll talk about it here and we'll talk about it again later, um, is we want them to sleep sideline with their knees or hips bent. Um, with a pillow between their knees or sleep on their back with a pillow under their knees. And we usually like a good, like we want a flexion. Um, we want a flexion in the hips and a flexion in the knees that decreases so much pressure um, off of the back.
Um, we really want them to avoid sleeping. Um, you know, prone is like the worst position. And yes, it's the one my husband sleeps in. Um, you really don't want to sleep prone because it's really bad for your back. Now, people with back pain, they say, oh, yeah, I feel so much better sleeping this way. But the, it does not help their back at all. It actually makes it significantly worse. Um, you want to create flexion to decrease, um, to offload some of that um, lower back tension. I also want to tell them um, while they're having this acute back pain episode to use chairs with good lower back support and armrest. It's so key. So I always like when I'm at the hospital, I'll go and steal the armrest chairs if I have like a non armrest chair because um, it's so key for your back to provide support. Um, if you're standing for long periods of time, place one foot on a low stool. It creates that flexion again, so there's not so much strain on your back. Um, wearing flat shoes or low heels or shock absorbent shoes or some sort of shock absorbent um, insoles. Um, it's the most ideal. We really want to consider how our footwear can affect um, how our back is doing. And like I mentioned, smoking cessation because of that impaired circulation um, that it can cause. Okay, this is usually where I do a body mechanics demonstration, but um, if you don't know about body mechanics um, or you have trouble on the next slide understanding any of these, you can definitely watch videos. There's tons of videos around that demonstrate them. Um, <clears throat> so general body mechanics that I want to teach a patient is not to lean over without bending their knees. So we don't encourage them to bend down. We want them to, um, we don't bend, bend over. You want them to bend down like by um, bending at the knee. Um, and so uh, we don't want them to lift things above the elbow level. So you should be reaching for things above your head um, or taking things and lifting them up above your head. Uh, do not stand in the same position for a long time like we talked about. Talked about not sleeping prone. So not sleeping on the abdomen or the back with the legs straight. Like legs straight is not a good thing for back pain. Um, you know, any sort of flexion is a good thing. Now we'll talk about other times where we don't like flexion, but this is the time we like flexion. Um, then, uh, like we said, bend at the knees, not the waist. And um, if you have to carry anything, you want to hold it close to your body and lift it slowly versus um, doing any quick movement. So you can kind of see here in these pictures, you know, you don't want to be hunched over. Um, you don't want to be um, laying on your stomach or prone. It's very bad. You can see that curvature in the back. Um, you want good um, workspace. You know, you always want to consider um, what's going to help you have a good posture. Oh, this is, we'll learn about the squatty potty later. We'll talk about that when you're um, lifting to, oh, I guess this is like in Europe. Yeah. By the way, if you've never been to Europe, like in some places, literally their toilets are just a hole in the ground and it's a beautiful porcelain hole. Um, but um, when it's your first time there and you're like 19 years old and um, you've never had to pee standing up, you know, um, at, in a public place, um, it's, it's a very new experience. So just know in some countries, they, they do not have seats. So, um, it's, it's definitely very different, especially when you've had a little alcohol in your system, it is not the best experience, um, word to the wise. But anyway, like this last one, um, you can see, we don't want to bend over, like see where this person's bending at the hip. We want to bend at the knee. And like I mentioned, um, we don't want to lift stuff above our head and we want to lift it slowly. I think that's all I've got. The next video will be about carpal tunnel. See you there.